for Kellen Grady and the Wildcats have jumped out to an impressive start and it's their defense setting up their offense, John Giannini. No points yet for the Billikens and I'm not surprised St. Louis has missed some shots, but what I'm surprised is that they don't have any offensive rebounds yet. Interestingly, St. Louis has the best offensive rebounding percentage in this league. Davidson, the best defensive rebounding percentage. So it's simply boxing out, keeping St. Louis off the glass. Make them miss and finish with the rebound. Kellen Grady already the fourth Wildcat to score. Lee Goodmanson, Brykovich, and Jones for the starting five to open this up. St. Louis trying to spark themselves with a couple substitutions here. Perkins coming off a huge game against Dayton with 25 points. And Javante Perkins, the Juco transfer, and quickly lets it fly. Offensive glass for French. Shot clock reset to 20. Weaver catch and shoot. He can hit that. Yeah, Weaver's role is as a three-point shooter. Davidson's doing a terrific job double-teaming French, but they leave the wrong person open. Weaver, the sniper. Came in with 142 career threes and almost 36% shooter. Brykovic, this is a clear mismatch. Uh, just couldn't get it to stick over Goodwin. Don't tell Goodwin that's a mismatch. <laughs> He's pretty strong, Matt. I wouldn't say that around Yeah, him. that's true. <laughs> Good point, Coach. We got a little distance, though. Yeah, I think you're all right. Court. Hopefully, hopefully, it, hopefully he doesn't watch the replay. <laughs> French, little two-game with Goodwin. Or Goodwin, rather, rotation for Weaver. And six off the bench for Tay Weaver. So here's what I'm impressed by by Weaver. He's a fifth-year transfer. Usually those guys transfer because they want a ton of playing time. Weaver's transferred to a school where he's a piece of a potential NCAA tournament program. And, and I watched him in practice yesterday, really unselfish and attentive. Not what I was expecting from a fifth-year guy. Collins lost the basketball. And grabbed by Weaver. And sometimes that's a mixed bag, right? Fifth-year guys, you don't know what you're going to get. Well, fifth-year guys usually go somewhere because they want to play all the time. Weaver's not in that situation, but at the same time, he's in the A-10. He's battling for an NCAA tournament spot, and he's relishing his role as a spark plug and a three-point shooter in this program. He's helped the Billikens with, what, six straight now. Started over four, two of five since, thanks to the two threes from Weaver. Grady trying to match. You can see that one, not the best rotation for when he let it fly. St. Louis had a hand up on that one for sure. St. Louis a very good defensive team. That one died for Weaver, offensive glass, and French with the air ball and the jump hook. Brykovich at 6'10", bothered French on that shot, made a miss. Brykovich off to a good start on both ends. Brady can't leave him open and makes him pay. Her girl fell. Don't fall if you're guarding Grady. That would be my advice. Five now for the Boston native, Kellen Grady. Matches the Davidson lead. French trying to pass out of the double. Numbers for Goodmanson. Contact and going the other way. Offensive foul on John Axel. So Perkins came to St. Louis is one of the best scorers in junior college basketball. He's known as a scorer, but he's fitting into the St. Louis culture, defending, holding his ground, taking Goodmanson's shoulder. And again, you don't have to be set to get an offensive foul. You have to be in a spot first. And if Goodmanson comes in at you as a defender there first and lowers his shoulder, offensive foul. And usually John Axel Goodmanson's the one on the other end of those. He's the one taking them. Yeah. Shot clock cut in half for Travis Ford and the Billikens. Good steal for French. And foul going up by Nelson Bochi Yedem. That was execution. That was the first time this game that French caught the ball with a foot in the paint. Every other possession, he caught the ball off the block and was easily double teamed, but they ran a set that time to duck him in. And any time a big man can catch the ball in the paint, I've often called that you score before you get the ball. If you could post up deep, you could score before you get the ball. 
And here's where the adventure begins for the Billikens. A lot of nights. 17 missed free throws the other night against Dayton. That game probably doesn't go to overtime. They even make half of those, Coach. I asked Coach Ford, and they're, they're 350 in the country in free throw shooting, shooting in the 50s. Asked him, if you just shoot 60%, Coach, what would your record be? Without blinking lies, he said 16 and 2. French only 34% on the year, unable to get both. They started one for their first eight the other night in that home loss to the Flyers. I mean, with below average free throw shooting, St. Louis is an NCAA tournament team right now. Um, but they know they're not that skilled. That's why they emphasize toughness, 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 wearing their hard hats, defense and rebounding, because they know they have to compensate for that lack of shooting. You come off an emotional high like they had the other night. How do you bounce back? You, you've been in situations like that before. Well, this team actually is in a better place than you might think coming off that really hurtful Dayton loss. They were up most of the game. Um, you know, they lost in overtime on a shot with one-tenth of a second left uh, with 17 turnovers and 17 free throws. So they took confidence away from that game. Uh, Travis Sports guys trying to find their bearings. Down by five. Good start for Bob McKillop's Wildcats here on Stadium. 